Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What an opportunity. What an opportunity that the Father has granted us, has created this opportunity for us so that we may experience his presence, his life. And uh, never forget that he's always on our sides. He's always there with us. And we are fulfilled. We are fulfilled in him. We are fulfilled with him. We are fulfilled because of what he made us to be. What he made us to be. You know, the issue is not what we are supposed to become. The issue is not what will happen in the future. The problem will always be what he made us to be. Who we are already are. What God has already done, not what he's about to do. Well, when we miss out on that, we intend to miss out of, of a lot of things. And that is the importance of the knowledge of the truth. We need to know the truth. We need to grow in the truth. We need to understand the truth. Because it will help us grow. It will help us grow. Glory to God. It will help us grow. It will help us grow. And when we grow, we grow according to the plan and the purpose of God. That means we discover who he is and who we are. And we grow up in the knowledge of the truth. The more truth you know, the more liberty you experience or you have. And you will never, never regret. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, we have been studying. I pray for you that you discover, understand what we've been studying or learning. What we are learning even now, discovering this amazing life in Christ Jesus. We have a word written in Romans chapter 8 verse 14. It says, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we explained what it means to be a son of God briefly. We explained the importance and the uniqueness, the privilege that is to be a son of God. Well, we have to go further and understand why he's talking about being led by the Spirit. But why does he say that when you are led by the Spirit, then you are the Son of God? What does this mean? We need to understand it. Glory to God. Now, the word led, because it says those who are led, is a Greek word, and this word means agontai. The agontai means to be born and carried by the Spirit to a specific destination. Well, the word born here is the, to be carried. To It takes you on his shoulders. It carries you, you know, to a specific destination. So being laid is agontai. Of course, it's, it's taking your hand and leading you somewhere. You're carrying you and leading you somewhere. Glory to God. So according to the context, this leading of the Holy Spirit does not refer to the guidance in life, but specifically to put into death the practices of death of the flesh leading to the full expression of the Christ life as uh, mature sons of God. I want you to understand that one, first and foremost here, is talking about being led into maturity, being led into maturity, being led into maturity. So we are led into maturity as mature sons of God because of a purpose, for a purpose, you know, all these verses we're going to read are very, very crucial. So there's something he wants to reveal to us here. And remember, it's a journey from chapter, in this chapter 8 from verse 1, it's talking about certain things and they have this divine flow bringing you to a higher dimension whereby he brings us to the end of this uh, dispensation. But he even tells us what will happen at the end of this dispensation. But what he talks about is in Greek. He says that we are led by the Spirit into maturity as sons. In other words, he doesn't want us to remain children. He doesn't want us to remain ignorant. He doesn't want us, much as we are sons, but we need to develop. We need to grow. 
See, this growth that he's talking about, that by the Spirit, he makes us, he helps us grow in the knowledge of who we are, in the knowledge of God, in the truth of God. And so the more we grow in the knowledge of God, we are growing as mature sons of God. And guess when something happens, that is how, you know, all these deeds of the flesh, you know, we put to death the practices of the flesh because we are led by the Spirit. Remember, we are enabled by the Spirit. We cannot do it by ourselves. So the Spirit helps us to put to death, the, the, or modify the, all the uh, leadings or, or the, all the practices of the flesh. So the flesh, the flesh itself, is, uh, uh, cannot have power over us. It cannot have power over us. It cannot have power over us. The flesh is now losing its grip on us because we are growing into maturity of who we are. Remember, the flesh is the unrenewed mind, the unrenewed mind. But then when you are growing in the, in the knowledge of your identity, meaning a son, your mind is being renewed and you are being renewed to the, in the truth. You are renewed to know the truth. And the, mo the moment you know the truth and you agree with it, you realize there are many things that you've been expressing or allowing to be expressed in your body which are not necessary, which are not supposed to be there. And therefore, you put to, motive, you put to death. That means by the Spirit of God and acknowledging what, who you are and what God is in you, you allow the Spirit to express that life in you. And that life is that eternal life a life of peace, a life of fulfillment, the life of God, that divinity at work in you. So this is what happens. So being led, that's how we are led. We are led by the Spirit into maturity as sons of God. Glory to God. We are led by the Spirit into maturity. So sonship is a status of high quality, of high quality. I want you to get it. There is no higher quality. There is no level that is higher in God than that status of sonship. One of its marks is being led by the Spirit of God. So the sign that you are a son of God, you know, you allow the Spirit to lead you. You grow because of the Spirit. You allow the Spirit of God to, to lead you. The work of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not only momentarily, you know, it's not momentary as in regeneration, but it's also constant as an adoption. So there is this continuous uh, leading of the Spirit. So he leads us continuously. And, and, and that's pure, so beautiful. We'll talk about the Holy Spirit later. But we need to know that he leads us. He leads us in the truth. He leads us. He continues to lead us. So he's always leading us. Regeneration concerns uh, our nature and condition in Christ. While adoption concerns our position and privileges in Christ. So being re regenerated. And that means our nature and condition in Christ has changed. And also, we're adopted as sons, we become sons so that our, our position and privileges in Christ are different. So the two are complementary aspects of our divine sonship. So we are first and foremost regenerated. And secondly, we're not only regenerated, we're also adopted. So the adoption means we are sons of God. It's not this legal adoption that we are used to, but it is, it is that the Father has declared that we belong to Him. We belong to Him. And since we belong to Him, we are His forever. So we are His sons, and that is a position which cannot be taken away from us. It's a position. Sonship is a position which is the highest position in God's ranking. Sonship is so important. You know, many people are not aware of sonship. They don't understand what it means to be a son, or they ignore or despise sonship. But that's what we 
That's where we are. And regeneration also, it means that some conditions have changed. So this is a reference to a more advanced stage of the Christian life. So the Greek word huos, you know, the word that was used to this, uh, in this word, in this uh, verse, is huos. It indicates the office of sonship. In the Greco-Roman cultures of antiquity, a father as the head of his household will set apart his own son and, and train him at the completion of his uh, this training the father would uh, then place his own son in the position of being his official representative as an adult so this adoption ceremony made the descendant a full partaker of the filial state so he was a son not only by nature but now in stature so this son is now a son in stature meaning he's been officiated by his father as his official representative so he could officially represent his father and bear this his name in the transaction of public affair he was by little a huos by title a huos you know so he's adopted his mature he's representing his father so by faithfully submitting to the operation of the holy spirit we are brought into the full enjoyment of our adoption rights to truly bear the title of heroes not only in nature but also in stature being laid by the spirit makes us grow we come into that stature not only in nature. Remember, in nature, we are one with God. You cannot be a son unless you are one with God. His nature is in you. But then there's growth. You grow as a son into stature. So you are now a son that can be relied on and a son that can take responsibility, a son that can represent his father and his name, using his name. That's what he's talking about. So you were a son first born by a father, but then you are trained and grow. That means the Holy Spirit helps us grow or helps us understand our journey as we grow into maturity. So the Holy Spirit leads us as believers primarily through the illumination of the eyes of our understanding to divinely clarify the word of God. So we understand the word of God through the help of the Holy Spirit, mental impressions or promptings in providing direction in making life's decision is not what the apostle is teaching here he's talking about leading us into the growth as sons of god so when we grow into maturity when we grow into this stature that is what he's talking about so he will lead us lead us glory to god so that we may be mature so that we may represent our father with in that full stature you see you can be a son and remain a child but then he is talking about heroes those who have grown but you can only grow by the help of the spirit as he illuminates your eyes illuminates you to discover what he means in his word thank god for this is his will for you to take over to reign with him to overcome to to be in that position of victory but you see it's possible as you allow the Spirit of God to lead you and He teaches you the revelation of the Word, He gives you the revelation of the Word, and understanding that will make you stand in your rightful place. Shalom, shalom. Remember to subscribe and uh, share and comment as well. Share this message with your world. Let somebody get to know the gospel. You are blessed.